Hello guys, and today I'm going to discuss the BBC presenter gender pay gap issue. Now you probably think, what am I talking about? I mean, surely you'd think women would get paid more than men just because they look prettier or something. Well, okay, this is the current issue that's taking place in, at the BBC at the moment. Um, there was a TV show called Points of View. Okay, where basically in the past uh, members of the public wrote in letters, now it's probably emails, um, to the BBC complaining about things on the BBC. And this is these um, comments are read out um, on a TV program called Points of View. And the presenters usually meant to be fairly humorous and make some comments based upon what the viewers said, make some sort of sarcastic or humorous comment and then sometimes even they might get a, an official from the BBC that will give their version of events or explain why. Okay, Now that isn't exactly what this is about. Okay, There is a woman doing a similar show called Newswatch, also at the BBC, which will basically um, point out maybe I believe where some people or maybe the BBC may have not done things as well as they could have done or where some people have questioned or debated things I can't remember exactly but it's basically called Newswatch because it's meant to be criticizing BBC news and it's an official BBC program believe it or not right yes communists criticizing communists I know that's not heard of in the so but um, generally it happens over here okay now if you don't understand that, the BBC is funded out of taxation, generally, over here, okay? Now, um, what's happened is, there is a, a TV presenter on Newswatch, who's a woman. And there was a TV presenter that at the same time was doing Points of View, which is a man. Which was, was presented by a man, okay? And the woman is claiming that she has been, was underpaid for her job because she claims that the man was doing similar work to her but was paid much more the BBC have argued that um, he was a well-known name when he um, joined the show and she wasn't um, to be honest nobody ever heard of her if we're being honest or virtually nobody had ever heard of her and also there were different shows where his show was more popular and had more audience figures her show wasn't quite so important and was on a news channel generally although it was repeated on a certain day on the main channel as part of a, a breakfast broadcast now the BBC are arguing that presenters should be paid based upon the popularity of the program um, the personality of the um, presenter uh, and that sort of thing Okay, and they're saying, you know, we understand, you know, different people have different roles and different presenters are paid different amounts of money because of their popularity or their skills or their entertainment value or whatever. And the BBC is saying this is just a business decision based on the fact that he's more popular than her or whatever, right? But she has taken the BBC to a tribunal saying that they were similar jobs and in her view she was being paid less than what was a man for the same job in her opinion or a very similar job okay and there's a law over here that says you cannot pay a man and a woman different amounts of money for the same work now this is where it gets really complicated okay no it's not complicated but um it's become you see there are unintended consequences of this law you see if you pay a man and a woman um, d vastly different amounts of money for similar work it is illegal but if you employ two men to do similar work and pay them vastly different salaries it's legal and if you pay two women the same amount vastly different amounts of money for similar work it's legal how does that work you know I mean you're saying that I mean that surely that in itself is sexist surely you're saying you can only complain if you can prove someone of a different gender to you is being paid a different amount of money but if someone of the same gender is paid the same amount of a much a much great I'm sorry a vast difference then you've just got to suck it up 
and you've just got to accept that. Now, surely that in itself is sexist, OK? Furthermore, the BBC points out that originally, before she took on the job, the job was done by a man in, on her show, and she was paid similarly to how what the man was paid um, after she replaced him. Okay, or it may have even been it may have even been the same amount. I can't remember. Okay, so they're arguing it has nothing to do with gender, and everything to do with the fact that they're different shows and different shows attract different audiences and have different characteristics. The BBC is arguing that on points of view, the um, personality of the presenter is more important than the um, personality of the presenter on Newswatch. They're claiming that on points of view, it's meant to be an entertainment show. The um, mem the um, TV presenter is meant to be slightly witty and more personable. And they're claiming on Newswatch, they just want somebody who's just going to state the facts. You know, OK? And she doesn't have to be so humorous or likeable, in their view. OK? But this is, and currently this has gone to tribunal at the bit, OK? And at the moment, a judgment has not been made on this. They believe this could be a landmark ruling, if whatever, whichever way it goes. Because I don't think anybody's ever done this before in the broadcasting industry. I think in the broadcasting industry, many people just accepted that different presenters got different amounts of money because of their popularity, the show, or things like that. And people just accepted it, OK? And, you know, if it been, could be proved that she'd been paying you know, grossly less for doing the same job on the same TV show alongside a man. That might be a different issue, OK? But given that these are two different TV shows on different BBC channels, um, it's generally... Um, I say generally because I think Points of View is on, I think, BBC One as well. Um, but BB, but hers is just repeated during a breakfast broadcast on BBC One. The main, it is mostly shown on the BBC News Channel, which isn't as widely viewed. Okay, well it might be people will are more likely to watch the news channel for about just to switch on at any time, watch see what the news is and disappear. They're not likely to switch on specially for her show so much. So that is what the BBC are arguing. But as I said, it does point out the unintended consequences that you can have with laws like this. Where if, for example, um, she had been a man, she couldn't complain because it would be two men and it would be tough luck. Um, so the unintended consequence of this law is it's actually sexist. It's saying that she can only has the right to a tribunal because she's a woman. She's saying that if she had been a man, she couldn't have complained. She would have just had to accept it because the person she would have been complaining about would have been a man being paid the same. She wanted to point out that she had nothing against the male presenter points of view, um, that it was not about him personally, it was just about differences of pay at the BBC. But this is a big debate. Should people be paid different amounts for the same work? Is it her fault that one show is more popular than another? After all, she's doing spending a certain amount of time doing presenting work, he's spending a certain amount of doing presenting work. Should it matter whether one show's more more popular than another? Is that her fault? Did she she didn't exactly build up the brand, if you like, nor did he. Um they were both shows which had been done previously by others. So it wasn't as if she suddenly started she was the first one ever to do this show, or he was the first person to do his show. You know? So this is currently a debate where I think nobody knows quite what to do because they are genuinely different TV shows. So, although it's similar work, similar types of shows in some ways, you know, but they're not the same programme. It's not like a male and female presenter on exactly the same programme. So, at the same time. So, this is where it gets rather complicated. I think the, this, the law is unfair in that it is sexist. It says you can only complain if you can prove somebody of an opposite gender to you um, has been paid a different amount. And, you know, and it's, I think, maybe even worse than that. I think you could have, for example, two men and a woman, okay, that employed. 
The man, one man, may be paid the same as a woman, but another man may be paid much more. Some could argue that she was paid a lot less than the person was, than the man that was paid much more, even though there may be another man that's paid the same. I think that if you want to bring out a law that says all people should be paid the same for the same work at the same company, then that might be a different issue. But it isn't. It's saying you can only complain if you can prove that somebody else of a different gender to you is being paid different, is being paid more than you, which in itself is sexist. It also could discourage people from employing women, thinking, well, women are likely to m whinge the most about this, because I don't think many men have, are likely to take a uh, company to court because a woman was paid more than them. Many of them would, would think, you sissy, just get another job if you don't like it, you know? So, I mean, that would be, they would be legally entitled to do so, but I think most men would just suck it up. But women are... A lot of women are generally better whingers and more likely to complain about this kind of thing. So, I mean, maybe you could say they're right, maybe they're wrong, maybe women have been exploited over the years, and you're right. But it is an issue where you can see that it is sexist, in that you can only complain if you can prove someone of a different gender to you um, is being paid differently. Um, so, you know... Um, I think there are unintended consequences of this. Some employers might think, okay, then I just won't bother employing any women. It may, it's illegal to do that, except in certain specialist work. You know, maybe, I don't know, if I can't think what, off the top of my head what, but there may be some jobs where it may not be appropriate for a woman. I, I, I can't think of what, but there must be some. Like for some jobs, it's not appropriate for men. For example, I think in rape um, crisis centres, they can legally ban men from working there just because they think that a woman will want to go into somewhere and not see a man if she's been raped. She just wants to talk to women about this. She doesn't want to talk to men about being raped because it's too traumatic for her, OK? So there may be some jobs where maybe men are, women aren't allowed because maybe men want to talk about things that are traumatic to them or, or something and they don't want to talk, I don't know, to a woman about it. I don't know. I have no idea what, you know, it's very hard to think of one, but there must be something somewhere right um in this country um you know so that's the issue and it may mean that some men will think oh i won't employ women because you might complain about the pay difference and if i employ a man i can just pay him less and he won't complain um so those are the issues okay um my view on this is Given the given how it currently works in the broadcasting industry, I think people have to accept that some shows are more popular than others, and the shows that are more popular tend to attract um, larger salaries because of the greater responsibility. Okay. Um, in that you know a lot of people like certain shows, and if the present and the presenters feel more pressure that not to make a mistake, perhaps, or to do the show nicely. Um, also, I think, perhaps, on some of the more popular shows, if the presenter becomes unpopular, they're more likely to be replaced. Whereas if it was a show that wasn't that popular anyway and was never supposed to be that popular, um, they might keep the presenter on the grounds, who cares? You know, it's not a top priority, it's not something the public are going to complain about, and they don't expect a large audience figure anyway. So they could argue that... Um, a lesser viewed program um, that's historically also been not viewed that much they don't need the best presenters or the most entertaining presenters okay and they could argue that you know um, so it is a difficult one but on the other hand you could argue is it her fault is it anybody's fault that one show is more popular than another and if they do, they physically at the premise, same premise, at the premises, for the same amount of time, doing essentially the same thing, should they be paid the same? Is it their fault that one product is more popular than another, or that one program is more popular than another? You know, um, if they're spending the same amount of time doing things, should it matter? You know, um, I 
I mean, for example, if some bo if you've got to um, shut two, I don't know, shelf stackers, and one person stacking items um, in the store in a section where it's very popular and lots and there's a rapid turnover of that product and another person stacking shelves and they're doing the same amount of work in an area which isn't as popular but they just ne need to but they've done the same amount of replacement which is one person was replacing the items once a week the other person was replacing them every day but this person has in the meantime been replacing other um, shelves in the meantime while they're actually replacing the shelves of the less pop of the shelf that doesn't change as often and the other person's doing the same amount of work on a shelf that's changed daily right and the other person's changing that shelf weekly maybe I don't know I don't work I've never worked in a supermarket as a shelf stacker so I've no idea how this works would they be paid just differently realistically no they would just be paid because generally supermarkets pay the lowest they can for shelf stackers I believe I think they probably pay the bare minimum they legally have to right so they would be paid the same because uh, the argument could be well they're doing similar work and how popular a certain brand is is not relevant to uh, how much they're paid to, to work in a supermarket um, you know so it can get rather complicated uh, my view I think given current mu given how the TV presenting world works she should she should probably lose the case based on how things currently are on the grounds that they're different shows and she has less responsibility um, because fewer people watch it okay and if she doesn't like it she should get another job and be grateful she's even got a presenting job at all because there are lots of people out there right who are desperate to get a job on television who would you know do anything to get a job on television because they are desperate to be found and discovered and be allowed to present shows and they would and she could probably be replaced very easily if they wanted to okay and I I know I probably shouldn't say that but you know TV is seen as a dream job she's not a cleaner at the BBC she's not doing something she probably absolutely hates because if she really hates it why is she doing it you know the for many presenting is a dream job and if it isn't well you know why are they there you know they're not doing it just to pay the mortgage surely you know so that's my view you know in what I call dream jobs people should stop whinging about the pay especially as it's not that badly paid and if they don't like it just get another job okay I believe you know I mean if she hadn't been paid at all or if they had lied or if or she hadn't been paid what they said were going to pay her and she hadn't accepted that or they'd been you know negligence in some way or um, I can understand it but you know my view is this is how the broadcasting world works um, you have to accept for example that there will be for example um, there will be some radio shows radio shows for example okay and during the daytime there'll be some radio shows which are very popular where lots of people listen to them and there will be some radio shows on what they call the graveyard slot very late at night and often um, new and upcoming TV radio presenters are tried out on what they call the graveyard slots okay they're tried out very late at night perhaps about three or four in the morning when very few people are listening so if they're not popular if, if they don't do very well or they think they're not very good live they can sack them and it's not the end of the world because it's a time when not many people are listening anyway whereas during the daytime they want um, generally experienced broadcasters or, or famous ones or maybe people who've moved from TV to radio and they generally want people who they know can do it whereas late at night they're willing to take chances with people to test out up and coming um, talent okay now given that very few people are going to be listening at three or four o'clock in the morning should they be paid the same as people who are presenting a show um, that's very popular and that will attract millions of listeners 
rather than a show which might attract very few people because very few people are up that, that time of night. Okay. On the other hand, the um, person, for example, that in the graveyard slot knows that if they make a sl any slight mistakes, that probably very few people will notice, and very few people would complain about it. Whereas if, for example, a presenter made a, a similar mistake during the um, a main popular show, it might that mistake might be all over the newspapers, it might be all over social media, and so that person feels under more pressure not to make any mistakes compared to the person broadcasting at three or four in the morning when nobody is listening, or very few people. Okay. So, but they could well argue they were doing the same job. They could argue that they turned up, they spent the same amount of time talking on the radio, and they could argue that they were doing similar work. If you could have the same issue, where you could have a man presenting a show, a radio show at 3 o'clock in the morning, complaining that he was being paid less than a woman presenting um, a main show during the daytime. Would that be fair? Would it be fair to, to, for him to argue that he was physically in the studio this amount of time? And that he um, did roughly the same amount of talking? Would that be fair? These are the issues, and at the moment, the tribunal has not decided one way or another. They've heard all the evidence, but they haven't made up their mind yet what they're going to decide. This is considered a landmark case. I don't think as, um, there is no precedent for this. Because, as I said, they are different shows. This is about broadcasting. And in the past, broadcasters were accepted to just be grateful they had a job in, you know, as a presenter at all, you know. Also, in the past, even if they weren't paid that much comparatively, a lot of presenters didn't want to complain because they didn't want to upset their bosses because they thought that there was always the possibility of perhaps progression or they might be paid not a lot comparatively for a presenting job now but there may be um, a, a good um, presenting job for them in the future and they, and they thought if they upset too many people they would never get the chance to present a better show. So those are the issues. What do you guys think? Write in the comments, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.